As I continue to video record this video along the way, my mom came back, by the way, as I continue to video record this video, it became to me evident that sooner than not, I'm going to see this familiar face again popping up on media. Do you know this guy here? Again, at the front page. Do you know this guy? I told you guys I am being video surveillance here in this shithole 24-7. It's Donald Trump. I know it, that as I'm going to continue with the video, it will be this man that will pop up on the front page. And I think Joe Biden dedicated his presidency to this guy. It is something I started the presidency of Joe Biden with, it was the claim that I started with, and it's something that continues to stuck. My work, literally, along the way. I knew this man is going to pop up. I wasn't, I didn't know that he's going to pop up during the video recording of this video at the front page of the Yahoo. I had no idea about this. But I was pretty sure that tomorrow I would see one on the front page again and so on. Because whenever the ethnic tensions, races, racism, discrimination are involved, it's immediately that U.S. government triggers this familiar face right through the front. And you know what? Vivek was not the only person that visited. He was not the only person who visited. Vivek was not the only person that visited in 2013. He was not the only person that visited from 2013. Another person that visited in 2013 was Indian Prime Minister Narendra Modi. And you, actually 2012, to be totally correct. And you know what Narendra Modi stated? It wasn't once the issue of loneliness went on, it went more than once. And you know what Narendra Modi stated? Narendra Modi stated an opportunity, not on one, but on many other opportunities. It started in 2012. And he went throughout my entire incarceration, incarceration at Psychiatric Hospital Ljubljana Polje. Narendra Modi repeated to me inside of this house, this is something that never ever should have happened. Indian Prime Minister locked, barricaded inside of this house with other politicians, with Slovenian police, barricaded literally to extort along other diplomats on issues how am I to see things as and what is expected of me, etc, etc, etc. Narendra Modi stated an opportunity in front of me. He stated this in front of me. He stated in front of me, you see this is a British, beautiful British website. He stated in front of me to Vivek Murti, to Dr. Vivek Murti. He stated in front of me to Dr. Vivek Murti. Nice little uh, feature from the YouTube demands no ad blockers in use. He stated to me like this on opportunity in front of me so that I would understand so I would climb in the pants of Dr. Vivek Murti. He stated like this to Dr. Murti, whatever your views will be, uh, it was like this, what do you think? What do you think? It appears that Dr. Vivek Murti was meeting Slovenian politicians, obviously, uh, sniffing around the area and was using other people to give me his view, brainwash basically on things. And he stated to Dr. Vivek Murti, 
whatever your views uh, what do you think about he was asking him what he thinks about you know about the situation and so on and he came repeatedly in front of me with gesture uh, finally statement of narendra modi to me in the face during mk ultra inside this house not once but at least two three other occasions whatever whatever vivek is official view on this situation will be right i uh, hope you understand vivek probably i'm gonna say is of indian origin vivek even stated me would consider if necessary immigration back to india so most likely he is of indian background completely indian uh, Vivek stated, uh, Narendra Modi stated me, whatever, it was first indirectly, whatever his, whatever, whatever his, uh, directly, whatever his official opinion is going to be, his official stand, his official point is also what is going to be the point of India, you know? So, you know what I'm going to say to you, I mean, India is one of the major players at the United Nations. We have a people so corrupt inside of the United Nations, then we don't have any kind of United Nations. Then we have a club, club of few, big and strong. Remember when I told you that I have a feeling that this face is going to pop up right back as I video record this stuff? because this place is video surveillance because this case is thousand times bigger than donald trump because this case is thousand times you know the whole world is based on this fucking case for almost the last 52 years 51 yes without mistake this is orwellian case this is a giant case this is a super giant case this is not a case of the prince william or even king charles now who, by the way, as prince, participated a very long time with his brother Charles. This is the fucking case of the Prince Philip, as a matter of fact, of Mother Queen, of Queen Elizabeth and Philip. Their kids, Princess Anne, Princess Charles, Princess Andrew, Edward. You get it? Case of the little grand grandchildren such as prince william prince harry etc 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 one of the few drop in the ocean of many is what this case is this isn't the case of antonio guterres his presidency at the united nations this is the case of me my case that exists for 50 fucking one years do you know how many vladimir putin's yeltsin's gorbachev's and others i have seen in my lifetime experience on my own skin i am extremely disappointed with the indian conduct and we'll reiterate, it doesn't really matter the views of the Indian people in streets of Delhi or um, whatever city in India. It doesn't matter what their view is on Donald Trump, what they think about Donald Trump and so on, etc., etc. It, it, doesn't, it doesn't mean to me, to me personally, because of what I have gone through, it means only one thing. It doesn't mean to me shit. Because one thing is what people say. And completely other thing is what diplomats can and do for the politicians, or I should say for the Western politic. Unfortunately, opinions of the people on the streets of Madras, of, of New Delhi, um, 
Calcutta, wherever, do not matter. Unfortunately, I would like their voices to matter. But their voices don't fucking matter. Their voices fucking matter not. You, the people, are the nobody and nothing. Because the support that's being expressed from very unlikely is done in a such a way that will cause a turmoil through the selected people, not necessary even inside of your country. It might be serving in other countries worldwide. And we're causing that detrimental, crucial moment, a turmoil that's necessary to pass certain resolutions. When I say resolutions, I say fuck you, United Nations. What I mean by the fuck you, United Nations is the UN, right? That's a, the one that's known about pass a resolution, pass a resolution, pass a resolution. In case you did not realize, in this mainstream media, in this puppet media, in this copy-paste great journalism, global journalism, copy-paste journalism, and journalists are used to use certain language that pertains like a parrot, like a fucking parrot. It only pertains to the certain issues. So when you say the United Nations, it's already a certain number of words that rings familiar in the years. When you say a NATO, it's already another language that's being used. And if you say European Union, it's already another language that's being used. And if you say whatever you say, and so on and so forth, and the Instagram followers and all this mess that goes on. What is reality? What is real, as I stated? is not published not even in a 5% of media that exists in the world. Those people that publish real, the truth, those are the people probably from under the bridges. Whose opinion, average person in New Delhi would say it doesn't even fucking matter, even that they don't understand that it's them who they are talking about. Because this shit twists around and sooner than later it kicks you in your ass, basically, with the face that you see, with the familiar face that you see right there. And, you know, when you say, when you say as a Indian prime minister that you're going to take a stand of somebody who is from United States of America with um, Indian background, when you say that you're just going to take you, you will take his view, his point of view as official, uh, you know, whatever his, whatever his view is going to be on it. When you say something like this, obviously that you are engaging in, in this case, you're obviously engaging in extreme prejudice. Obviously that that you took the country into something that basically colonialists, those that you condemned historically, like you would want the world to see us to, to see itself in you. You've been exploited by the British, you've been this, you've been I don't know what the fuck you've been. But with the little stuff like this you are the one who is irreversibly pulling the whole fucking world into the racism game, into the fascism and into the Nazism game. This is the dirty game of India. You don't, your opinions in Delhi, what you got to say and la la la, that doesn't fucking matter. What matters are your actions, the do, what you managed to accomplish, what have you done for that not to happen. What have you done to contribute physically, financially, etc., cetera, etc., cetera, to stop something, to prevent something? From my point of view, it's nothing. You are a part of the problem of the man that we see right there in the picture there is, because you, the people of India, are actually enforcing. 
the politic of the colonialism. Now you're going to say, oh, that those are maybe our politicians. It's not us that are fucking doing this stuff. Well, it is you, because you're not doing anything about it. You claim to be a society, a democratic society, and that you have a values, and that you have a journalism, and you are very, very opinionated, and you want to judge. My God, you were fucking judgmental. And I'm fine with it. By the way, I'm fine with it. I don't mind Indian people being judgmental. I actually like that. I like a variety of opinions, views, and so on. But it bothers me that you're not judgmental when it comes to corruption. Actually, I should say your own politic that other people have to, other nations have to pay for with their blood. That's where my problem is. When it comes to me, you're taking official stand of somebody from United States of America, uh, basically just like this, you know, just like that, that you feel that, uh, yeah, I mean, fine, you know, whatever you're going to say, Vivek, you know, this is what our also view is going to be. Um, I'm going to tell you here on the same page, look, some studies claim that loneliness can make a person more susceptible to dementia and schizophrenia, and that depression causes the extreme loneliness and cause people to become suicidal. Loneliness is much more than minor nuisance and so on and so forth. You see, how much do you know about what loneliness can do and how little your conscience is dictating you about the people whom you alone, with your careless actions, have pushed along the edge. You're talking about the Europeans. And then you're going to say, when I'm going to say, fine, if you said that some American over there is correct, whatever he says about my case, whatever he does with me, you're going to say, when I'm going to say that the British or the Germans are correct when they're going to say, let's go back to India and let's put Indian people in the chain. Let's get them back on a hunger. Let's destroy them. Let's annihilate them. And you're going to say, wow, boy, you're fucking racist. You don't have the right to say this. You're a white boy and you're a racist. And I unlikely am from Eastern Europe, actually. What my appear to you as a white is actually Eastern European from the country that never colonized any other country or any other nation, never participated in colonization or any of it, any of what you consider to be of, um, you know, problem to you historically looking Indian people. But with your conduct at United Nations, it's actually, I don't understand if you understand where the fuck United Nations is. But your conduct in the United Nations is contributing to the fall of this world. It's about the money, yes. Don't steal what is not yours. Do not steal whatever is not yours. Respect the people so that you can be respected in India. At the United Nations, your jobs are clearly outlined. What is expected of you at the United Nations is to act according to your conscience, according to your sound judgment, based on facts. Every case is different and difficult to um, evaluate. This is the easiest case in the world that's ever existed. This is a case that every person with mental deficiency that would not, that would have a difficult to count up to 100, easily could see what was done to me in respect to work so that we could discuss the issues of the loneliness. I don't have anything else I would say to this stuff. I could say a lot of stuff. Um, I was going to embed some other stuff into it, but I am going to stop short of this work of, um, of this individual. 
outline you this here on the side for what this kind of stuff is used, what kind of agenda this man is pushing. And he did engage in the terrorism together with Joe Biden, with other Americans inside of the barricaded house in Slovenia with the Slovenian police, stuff like this. It's exactly what the United Nations is out there to prevent. It's exactly the job of United Nations out there to immediately send investigators, police, to get in touch with the person and get from the person feedback and interrogate authorities on a level at United Nations to learn about why this stuff has been done and so on and so forth. Well, obviously, you're not working for United Nations, so I see no purpose for United Nations to exist. And this brings us back to this familiar face right here, and even to more familiar than this face here. The two very, very familiar faces. This here. You see this here? And that's actually the man that is doing his best to destroy United Nations. This is the man who, in this crucial for him and moment, would love nothing more than to take something that doesn't even exist anymore apart. Netanyahu, Israel worked on undermining United Nations since United Nations almost existed. Okay, the halfway. Since it turned into their advantage, they started to work against the United Nations in absolutely every sense, every meaning of United Nations that exists out there. And you see, you are a part of a big fucking problem. With your, if you like, people from India in the United States of America doing stuff behind which you even have positioned your, in my face, when considering MKUltra, is your official views again. You're undermining, sir, the values of life in this world. I'm now talking to India about this stuff. I will launch a complaint at the United Nations, and I'm here to tell you I will not negotiate with any kind of racism, with any kind of ethnic tensions that you might have in your head you might carry in your head against me any kind of prejudice that you exercise in the past against me. I will never stop short at pointing at you, complaining at you, and going forward against you. Your fucking Mahatma Gandhi, uh, listen to me, your fucking Mahatma Gandhi is over there in India. Your fucking Mahatma Gandhi did not lose 50 fucking two years of life. I lost 52 fucking years of life because of you. You pride yourself with your heroes. You push your views, and you want the world to see your truth from your side of the history. But at the same time, you go around and you murder, you kill. You do it your way, the way it fits to you, and you think other people at the same time are going to pay for it. I don't agree with it, sir. You're going to have a problem for me. I don't know if you can tell anything worse to Indian people than fuck you in your fucking Mahatma Gandhi, the peace boy, the peacemaker, according to which you proceeded your holiness your holy, your uh, yoga, your uh, Hinduistic, your peaceful ways in this world. When the British are going to ring the ring, when the Germans are going to ring the ring, you know what I'm going to say to you? My official stand I'm going to say, fuck you, is whatever they say about you. That's what you are pushing the world into it. This is how you do it. This is your fucking Mahatma Gandhi. You have nothing to do with whatever you preach to the world. You tell the world about one thing, about peace, about stuff like this, and you walk like a fucking elephant inside of the porcelain store, lying about people, destroying things, doing at crucial moments at the expense of other people, whatever it fits to you.
That's your religion of, that's your Indian religion of peace. Peace, brothers.